What's happening? This is Evan Dunn, and welcome to another episode of the BFB Podcast. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest. She is a creative coach who has amassed over 10,000 subscribers on YouTube in just under a year by becoming a voice for, lack of better words, for people who felt like they were betraying themselves. Please welcome Shimdi E. Hasey. Hey, thanks for having me. That's no a really problem. Is that what I have become? Yeah. <laughs> a voice for people who have been betraying themselves. Also, I am at 14,000 subscribers now, so, you know, we out here. <laughs> so, congratulations on that, definitely. How's it feel? It feels amazing. And it's so interesting because you really do get used to everything in life. Like, you always kind of return to the average kind of whatever you're kind of feeling in your spirit is, you kind of return. So while it's like, it was so exciting, especially when I went from like having 4K for like years to like jumping to 10, I was like, whoa, and it was so exciting. And then now, I'm, you know, I have another 4K on top of that. And now I'm just like, it's cool. You know, like it's dope. It's not 100K, it's not a million. And I know that that will go on forever. Like you can always add more zeros at the end of a bank account balance. So I know that it's, you got to just be happy where you are always. So, um, but yeah, it feels good. I feel very grateful. Absolutely. That's good. That's good. It's like to do that in just under a year. It's really amazing. I actually want to touch more on that because you released that still. It hasn't even been a year yet. It's like right. April of this year will make an entire year that you have made that video. And I just wanted to ask, like, what advice would you give to somebody who would just make that step you made over a year ago? Or what is some, I would say, some pitfalls you would even tell yourself to look out for in walking it's almost a year from now? Yeah. So I think the main one, and I continue to learn truly every single day, is that our life is ours to create. And so we can either be dragged along by it or we can like actively like stand up like that awesome meme and uh, and decide what kind of life we want to have and walk into it confidently. And I think when I look back at how I was when I was leaving that job, it was because I was at that point of just real like burnout and frustration and like desperation and like sadness and despair and all these like intense words because I let myself be dragged along by life and I hadn't taken responsibility <laughs> for my role in it. And now as almost a year later, I have, I'm experiencing what it's like to actually say, well, what do I want? What kind of life do I want to have? And understanding that it is my responsibility to create it. And if there's things, meaning um, usually fear, <laughs> keeping me from, from going after something, it's my responsibility to let myself confront. And, you know, confront, I think, has an aggressive connotation. So maybe even just meet with, you know, and hold space for that fear and let that fear have a voice and, not think that um, because it's something that I don't want, it's not a part of me. Um, a lot of the healing I've been doing recently has been like when I want to go after a new job or do something cool or new creative project. Um, and that's, there's that voice that's like, you're not going to get it and you're not good enough for it. And they're not going to pay you that amount of money. You're not worth that. Instead of being like, shut up, shut up. I'm like, okay, who's, who's saying that? And like, give that small, usually like three-year-old version of Chimdi a voice to actually say like, what do you, what's, tell me what's going on right now. And holding that space has been a game changer. So um, I think if you're at a point where you are going to quit something that doesn't serve you anymore, I think understanding that, you know, there was a reason at the time it was something you decided to do. And the way you create a life that you really want is by lovingly pulling in that part of you that thought it was a good idea at the time and say, hey, what was going on there? So that moving forward, you can make choices that are just way more aligned and just leave you with a lot more happiness and joy. And it really is way better <laughs> when you do it that way. But be prepared because like, yeah, if, you, if it was easy, you would have been quit, right? So um, just prepare yourself for that, for that spiritual journey. Definitely. Thank you for sharing because it's taking that leap of faith can definitely be um, for lack of a better word, scary, especially if you don't have a safety net of a, another job to go to. So it's, it's definitely something that I would say was very honorable. And I do appreciate you creating a place of vulnerability, creating a video from vulnerability and using that as a superpower to help people realize, you know what? It's not so bad mm -hmm. because, you know, as you said, it's like, 
you said this in quite a few of videos, like a lot of these um, employers, they lie about, you know, the wages and how much they're willing to pay you. One of the things I've oft, often tell people is uh, interview is a negotiation. Mm. You're negotiating each other's value. So mm -hmm. where you negotiate your value to them, they negotiate their value to you and you decide between each other, is this going to work? If you mm -hmm. go in there thinking that you need something, you're already giving them the leverage. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask through this transformation, what power and what leverage have you seen in yourself that you have that can be extremely marketable, not only for yourself, but for other companies that wouldn't want to work with you? Well, I think on that point around the vulnerability, you know, and realizing that often it's the things that we are most scared of sharing and telling the truth about that are the things that are going to bring us success. Because if you're alone, if you if you feel a way, it's very rare that you are alone and feeling that way. But and if you're scared about sharing something or doing something, you're probably not alone in being scared about it. And that's, I think, what people really resonated with is that they were like, that's what I'm like. This is what I'm going through. This is how I feel. And then seeing someone else say exactly what's on their heart. They're like, that's me. Like, I'm you. Like, there were so many comments that were like, we literally are living the same life, girl, you know? Um, so I think that is what I'm realizing is me being myself is truly, genuinely the most valuable thing. And I'm genuinely irreplaceable. Like, there's literally no one else on the whole planet who has my exact set of experiences and has my perspective and my like particular take on the world and my specific humor and specific energy like that cannot be replicated and that's the case for literally every single person and it's leaning into that not running away from it and trying to make yourself more palatable it's actually leaning into the things that are just you that's going to allow people to feel so seen because everyone knows they've got stuff that's just them and they think it's weird or strange or odd. And it's like, no, that's the good stuff. And it feels amazing to see someone being themselves because it makes us feel like, oh, okay, then I can be myself as well. So that just vulnerab vulnerability, that honesty. Um, I feel like we talk a lot about, you know, being authentic a lot in cultural and, and social media spaces, but it really does come down to just being yourself because on a very like deep energetic spiritual way we know in our heart when it's fake like we know and it doesn't feel good and it feels a little bit like an insult when someone is not being authentic towards you because it's dishonoring the truth of your soul right so um that's what i that's what i think i'm bringing to life and to my work and to my creativity and i'm the most happy when i'm engaging with people who also value that and are like living into that or at least aiming to live into that Okay, perfect. So with this, um, it brings me to where I really wanted to um, talk to you about on this um, episode. And that's this has definitely had impacted you financially in many different ways. <laughs> At least. <laughs> Someone, someone left me a comment because I want to make a video about it being a year later. And so someone was like, are you close to making what you made before you quit? And I literally just laughed. <laughs> yes, I, I cut you off. Please continue. Oh, you're good. You're good. This is this is, or, this is organic. So what I wanted to ask is like, how has this impacted your view of money since your, your liberation? From this. Uh, I love it. I love using liberation as the term too. It's truly the only thing we're here for. Um, I think I thought of money as the security, as the safety. Um, so especially as I've been going on my healing journey and deepening my faith and getting closer to God, I feel like this journey and God has taught me like, you don't get the security and the safety from the money you already have it with me. And then I give you money and I give you all of these things. I give you every single thing you've got in your life. And I don't give it to you because you were good that day or you, you know, it's because you are inherently worthy of anything you want. And if you ask for it, I'll give it to you full stop. And I think coming from a childhood where I didn't feel that sense of like abundance in the same way, you know, it's, it's been very radical to accept the idea that I don't have to do anything to deserve anything. I don't need to do anything to deserve love 
or safety or security or abundance or anything else. It is inherently my right as someone who's inherently worthy as a child of God. And it feels radical to say it and it feels radical to believe it and it feels radical to live it. And that's what a lot of my journey has been, has been it's one thing to intellectually believe it, it's one thing to say it, it's another thing to live it and to make choices from the fact, from that belief that you actually believe it. Um, and that has been like the game changer. So I think understanding that money is not, basically just not, I know you had a recent conversation around like turning things into idols. Um, yeah, money is not this idol to be worshiped. It's not the end all be all. It's not the source of happiness and success. It can give you access to these other things, but it in itself, it's not holding, <laughs> you don't hold the paper in your hand and you're like, here's the paper, I'm happy. And if anything, if you do, cause people are always like, money doesn't buy happiness. I mean, but it does buy blah, blah, blah. And it's like, think about it. If the difference between you feeling happy is holding paper in your hand, doesn't that mean <laughs> that the happiness is actually inside of you all along? And it's just a matter of you switching it on and off in your brain. Um, there's like a great story I read somewhere about like, um, I think a man is like, uh, I think there's like a beggar on the street and there's like a man who like comes by and his like, you know, chariot or whatever. And he like hands the man like a, a gold nugget. And it says like, oh, this, this is a gold nugget. Like you can mm -hmm. take this and you know, here, here's some money. So with that gold nugget, that man just like goes off and with that new confidence actually like starts businesses and creates all this stuff. And then now he's the one <laughs> in the chariot. And then he goes on along and he sees a beggar and he's like, hey, here's this gold nugget. If you take this, you know, you'll be successful. And instead of kind of taking the confidence, the man just goes to like exchange it <laughs> for money and finds out that it's actually just like gold plated rock or whatever. Like it didn't actually have any inherent value. It's just the value that you bring to it. And I think, especially as I've been thinking about how do I get this money so I can do all these nice things and have all these, have a nice apartment and blah, 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 is realizing that it's not about any actual physical finite object. It's about my understanding of my own worth. And do I believe I have something to give? I have a way of serving. I have something that people would be gladly, like they would gladly exchange their money for a coaching call with me or for, you know, some advice or for some like community engagement um, or for voiceover work, like whatever it is, like, do I believe that like, yeah, no, this is, this is, this is worth it. Like you're going to get a good deal. You could be happy um, to get this. And I think growing up and up until very recently, I had that mindset of like capital, capitalism is inherently a scam that you can't be a good capitalist. There's no such thing. If you have a, if you have something that you're selling to someone else for money, there is evil in there somewhere. Someone is being exploited. Like it didn't occur to me that like, no, you can just be giving someone a service and they want it. And so they give you money. And I was like, it, it really blew my mind when I understood that. So that's been a major thing I've been like healing around. Definitely. It's, and I love the fact that you mentioned it's like safety and security comes from the Lord. And it's like you, many cases you touched on a key point is one thing to intellectually believe that to well, excuse me let me, let me rephrase this is one thing to intellectually know that it's another thing to actually believe that and i'm i switched up the word usage because to believe from what i understand is to actually do believe mm. is an action if if i believe i use this analogy all the time if you tell a child that they are going to Disney World and they believe it, what are they going to do? They're going to pack their bags prior. Why? Because they are prepping with belief comes anticipation and a form of expectation. So because of that, when we live our lives fully believing in God, it's like we need to learn how to anticipate and expect that, no, he will provide, not that he might, he will and mm -hmm. that's been a that's been something that has been a struggle for me to believe sometimes because um culturally we've been created to be our own guys and provide for ourselves for so long mm -hmm. it's so hard to just let go and be like you know what you got this i'm taking my hands off the wheel I'm not going to tell you to dictate you got this and yeah. I wanted to ask, it's like, so what were some of the other self-limiting beliefs that you just really had to let go of with your journey with this? I feel like I'm thinking about around my creativity, especially. 
um, is that I had to make sort of like the shiniest, most highly edited YouTube video with all of the right SEO tags and the right title and thumbnail and everything has to be, you know, everything has to be following all the rules of YouTube in order to be successful. Um, there was a part of me that knew that wasn't true, but didn't believe it. They didn't fully believe it to the point of action. And so I would try to be a version of myself that I thought would be good for YouTube. Um, and it was the process of getting burnt out on doing it <laughs> that had me, okay, let me just tell, tell my story and just throw some B-roll on it and keep it cute and keep it simple and have faith that, and not even, and that's also another one is like releasing the expectation, not even thinking like, oh, this is what's going to like resonate with so many people, but this is what I have to say. And I'm just going to say it. And that's that. And if people, if it resonates with people, awesome. If not, that's cool too. So this is what I've got. And like having the video I made about putting my job be so successful felt very much like an affirmation of, yeah, you don't, you do what you want to do. Like, I like making videos where I have, like I'm out in nature and I have this gorgeous B-roll and it's very beautiful and flowy and nice. Like, I really enjoy doing that. Um, and sometimes I just want to sit and talk and just be like, here's what I'm going through. Here's why I stopped smoking weed, you know, and just talk about that. And it tends to be the stuff that isn't, that I'm not in my head about, like I'm in my heart about it. I'm in the spirit about it. That's the stuff that really resonates. So realizing, as you said, like, it's not, it's not on me to fulfill my dreams. Um, someone left a comment on, uh, I think it was in my Patreon where I was talking about, you know, affording living in New York and stuff. Cause that's where I want to move. And someone said, um, if it's God's will, then it's God's bill. And I was like, mm, I like that. Wow. <laughs> like, it's something, isn't that a good one? <laughs> bars i like it <laughs> it's like if god's putting something on your spirit god's got it you know and one of my favorite things about the bible is that there's so many stories of god coming to people and being like all right listen i need you to like go over here free all these people lead them to a new land and that person's like mm, i really would love to not do that and maybe someone else can do it and god is like it's not about you i am doing it i just need you to, you be the one to like do the thing and they're like but i mean i'm not really a good i'm not a good talker i'm not really and they're like it's not god's like i've got this it's not about you it's about me and i also heard something a while ago around like you want to live a life that you want to you want to dream and you want to think about like a life where look someone looking at it would be like how did how did you <laughs> manage to do this so that you can say yeah it wasn't me it was god this is not my hands this is what god can do in your life if you allow god to do it um and that has really stayed with me um so yeah those are some of the few has been like thinking i need to be the one to do it all and i know that's a function of trauma now like thinking that um if unless I am taking care of it, it's not going to happen. It's not going to get done. I don't feel safe or comfortable relying on someone else or asking for help. I know now that like that's because of trauma, right? Um, and in some ways that can help you because it can make you very self-sufficient. It can make you independent. You can make you a go-getter, an overachiever. And that's the beautiful thing about how we adapt as children is that we adapt in a way that helps us survive. And then it's all about once we realize, oh, this doesn't actually serve me anymore. That's when we can examine it and pull ourselves in love and release it and, and choose a better way. So, so yeah, those are a few of the things that I've been, you know, letting go of lately. Perfect. Thank you for sharing because I have to agree. It definitely is a cause of trauma. I myself as someone who has, when I first started YouTube, I was the video editor. I was the graphic designer. I was the, um, intro After Effects designer, like you, you name it. I even use After Effects. I use Blender to create my own video yeah. intros. And it's like you're your script writer, you're your marketing advisor. And it's after a while, you need to understand it's like, you know what? I don't need to be doing all of this. Um, I would recommend a good book. This book, uh, The YouTube oh. Formula, it's a really good book it, because it actually, um, teaches you like, hey, how to actually turn this into a legitimate business and actually, you know, how to really not only find your tribe, if you found them, how to maintain the people who are already following you and understand why they follow you. And mm -hmm. I think to me that is important because any, any business that's successful understands why that person keeps coming back in the door. They know why to keep coming back in. 
And I'm, I'm learning now as a content creator, I should know why people would want to watch, you know, this podcast and mm-hmm. actually have an idea in mind of who do I want to reach. Mm-hmm. And so when we get back into letting go of self-limiting beliefs and wealth, for me, one of my self-limiting beliefs was, hey, it's only a top 1% that could reach this level of success. And I'm like, that is the biggest lie. There's room for everybody to win. And it's a form of trauma to shift blame onto somebody else to say, hey, I can't be here because it's reserved for this echelon of people. I'm like, no, mm-hmm. no, it's that I've come to humbly accept. No, I just haven't been doing the right things for me and understanding what works best for me to be successful and in that same area. But um, I wanted to even go into you. Well, I'd, love to, I'd love to talk about that a bit because one thing okay. I have been thinking about is how I'm contextualizing my role on earth, you know, and I don't think I do necessarily think of it from a business mindset. Um, I started doing like getting into breath work lately, taking them deep belly breaths. And one thing um, Scott Schwang said, who I was like uh, listening to support that was around, like someone asked him, like, what do you think the purpose of life is basically? And he was saying, you know, it's love. Like as far as he's concerned, it's just comes down to love. Mm -hmm. And he was like, if it's not love, then what are we doing? More buying and selling. And I was like, that just perfectly sums up like what a lot of our time is spent doing is either buying something or selling something. And when I think about YouTube, I think of myself as someone who creates videos on YouTube. Um, But I don't think that's my purpose. Like, I don't think my purpose is about creating videos on YouTube or even building up a like successful YouTube channel that has all these millions of subscribers. I really feel like my purpose is to enter closer and closer into relationship with God to show up more authentically in my own life. I love sharing my story of doing that and that attracts people who want to hear about it in via video, but also in real life and in conversation. And as I just move through the world. So I think that's why I have a bit of a, I think I'm still, there's a bit of a, there's, there isn't clarity for me around what does it actually mean for me to grow a YouTube business? Cause it's, not about like, cause I do kind of think it is straightforward <laughs> when it comes to making a YouTube channel. Like we kind of know what people like and you really just have to decide, do you want to do the formula? And I know for me, the reason why I haven't reached, like haven't had even more growth is because a part of me really resists doing the formula because I know it's not a like inherently being more successful on YouTube will not get me closer to my ultimate goals. Um, so that's why. I, so I'm, I'm, I'm so I'm interested in that book, but I'm realizing there's a part of me that still has a bit of resistance around like the respect. business side of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No respect. Um, I to give some context, I bought this last year. I'm just not reading it because <laughs> I've been resistant on that as well. But I've become to look at. I feel like we, as a, from a societal point of view, have perverted the word business. Mm. And gave such a a negative connotation. And I try to look at it now as just someone who just gives value. Mm. And I look at it from a place of if I'm a business, what value can I give? Yeah. You know, I am speaking from a biblical perspective of it's better to give than to receive. I'm open to receiving, but very much open to receiving. But what can I give? Let that mm-hmm. be my focus first. How can this be value to somebody else? If the re- the what game shifted for me was if this reaches one person and one person's life has changed, that's enough for me because God mm-hmm. got my life. Otherwise, I'm mm-hmm. covered when it comes to food, water, clothing, all that. So my essentials are covered. I'm not making this to become super famous or anything. This is just what value can this give and how can I make value not just for one person, but for more people and more people and more people. So I would say that's where this has opened the, the door for me to, to read this book. Not to mention that the reader himself, 
I can see there's certain parts that he writes also from a Christian perspective himself. And to me, that does that does help because if I know our beliefs are in line, I can be a little bit more receptive to hear what you have to say if I know we're on the same page with a few different things. So he 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 definitely touch, touches on a, on a lot. I'll say definitely take your time, though, because if you're at a place where you're you're still free and where you're at, be there. I yeah. always tell people, it's like, don't rush where you're at. Don't rush the, the process. If this is where you are in life, embrace the season that you're in. Exactly. The process is the point. It's like, <laughs> sometimes we think like, let me hurry up. But it's like, what are you hurrying to? Are you just rushing towards death? Like, there's nothing else to do but be here. Exactly. And it's like, and even then, see, my perspective is, I, I've been on record to say this before, my perspective on life is just different. I tell people, I've said, listen, I'm, I have eternal life inside of me. I'm not going, I said, even if I sleep for a little bit and when I wake back up, I'm going to be doing this and more. Mm-hmm. That's that this, cause this is what God created me to do. God doesn't mm-hmm. create people to do things from, from a temporary standpoint. Mm-hmm. He's saying like, okay, do this now. And then when our, this new heaven, new earth come, you're still going to be doing this, but more responsibility. So I'm like, let me build towards that. So I work from from a place of, is this going to be built from a place of life beyond this point? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's that's just me. I, I I understand not everyone has it, but I don't I don't view life as I'm going to die someday. I view life. It's like that's that's a given that people you know pass on. But it's like the place that I'm at now. I'm like okay. Even though I may close my eyes, what else can be done or what can I leave behind? So for somebody else to pick up the pieces and take off where I pick up where I left off, mm-hmm. you know, leaving behind legacies. So mm-hmm. that's just my mentality. Yeah, I love getting philosophical, but I know we could get into that for a while. But yeah, yeah very similar in terms of just like the infinite nature of life itself. Absolutely. And I think it's like an overarching sense of there's only one direction we're going, <laughs> which is towards God. And then it's just like a circle. Like we go towards God, we're back. And then we explode again into a gazillion atoms and all this separate energy. And then we do it once more. Like let's, and let's just bring ourselves right on back to being one with God. Um, I just want to name that point around like giving and receiving. Cause if you consider the fact that the separation between us is an illusion, we're all just one <laughs> and, you know, one with God in the first place, when you give, you're actually just, giving to yourself um, and receiving is beautiful too, because when someone, we need to have people who receive to make the giving <laughs> have meaning, right? But it really is that same circle idea. Like you're giving to yourself who is receiving and then giving and vice versa. So um, yeah, definitely resonates with me. Perfect, perfect. But it's like, I actually want to go into another form of creation because as content creators, we understand the importance of wealth. And wealth isn't something that we're taught in school, colleges, universities. In fact, as we just mentioned, we're so. Material wealth? Do you mean uh, monetary wealth? Or do you mean like another sense of wealth? I'm talking about wealth in general. Like wealth, because wealth could be monetary, but wealth is wealth is thoughts, wealth is ideas, wealth is. Community, our friendships. There we go. Mm -hmm. There you go. So that's exactly where I'm at with it. So I was going to say, we're taught that, you know, subconsciously there's only limited room to be successful in this world. And I wanted just to ask, it's like, how has this financial change impact your views on wealth in general? Whether that be monetary, whether that be, as you said, friendships, um, relationships, what have you. One of my favorite quotes is um, anything that money can do, friends can do better. Uh, It's better. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. It's nice to have a boat, but sometimes it's better to have friends, a friend with a boat (laughs) than to have your own boat. Um, So I think that's been one of the main things is just realizing that realizing for myself what I am doing and how I am being when I'm feeling deeply joyful, deeply peaceful, deeply fulfilled and creating a life where that is what I spend my time doing. Um, a friend told me the story about like, uh, there's this like businessman who like goes out to the sea and there's like a man, he's like a fisher, a fisherman who's working there. 
and the, the businessman is telling the fisherman, like, here's how you can like turn your the, your love of fishing into a business, so that you can like get all these clients, and blah blah. And the guy's like, um, okay, so then, well, so I say I did all that and I had all this money, then what would I do? Well, the guy's like, well, then you can retire. And then he's like, okay, so what would I do when I retire? Whatever you want to do. And he was like, so fishing, which is what I'm doing now. <laughs> and just this idea of like, sometimes we think we need X to get to Y. And actually we have genuinely everything we need in this moment, in this abundant moment, we have everything. And it's the lie to think, oh, I got to hustle and I got to do this and that. And once I put up this next video, then I'll get to this space. And then once I move to New York, then I'll have access to the creative community. And that way I'll be, and it's just like, <laughs> You don't need any of it. You're good. Like you literally have it all right now. So I think realizing that wealth truly is a mindset. You know, I think sometimes people who um, are more tied to like material, their physical existence kind of see things through the lens of what is the food on my plate? Do I have electricity? Do I have a roof over my head? Do I have clothes on my back? Mm -hmm. And that being their marker of, um, of abundance. Um, and I fully understand how if you don't have these like basic needs being met, it can be hard to think more esoterically and philosophically about all these different things. Um, and at the same time, I think realizing that you are alive, you know, and that is inherently abundant, like to just be living is incredible and having that gratitude for that. I think that's what allows you to be open for all the opportunities that sort of can come your way. Um, I had someone ask sort of once I, when I quit, did I know about all the different things that I would be able to do that would get me money? And I had a sense of some of them, but no, but I was open to it. And because I was open to it and cause I was, was like, yeah, I'm interested. People who were like, oh, well I have this opportunity. They were lined up to give it to me. Um, and so for me, when I think about how I, when I feel the most, when I feel the most abundant, it's when I am creating, it's when I am dancing, it's when I am in nature, it's when I'm with my friends is when I'm having dope conversations like this, like that is when I feel the most rich. And when I think about what I would do with more money, it would just be do more of this. It would just be spend more time in different parts of nature. It would just be have conversations with different people about different conversations. And what I think is very appealing to me about wealth is the richness of perspective. You know, like the idea of like one of my friends, for instance, um, didn't grow up with a lot of money and now has a lot of money. And so one of her challenges is how do I live into my abundance in a way that doesn't make the people around me who don't have as much feel bad. And that's something that I never would have, that's not one of my problems in this moment, but it's just interesting thinking like you have a, you're always going to be called to face parts of you that have not been healed, no matter your circumstance. So it doesn't matter what it is because if you want to be your best full self, that's most aligned with God. The path is the same for all of us. We all have to face our stuff and bring it in with love and move through it. It's not about pushing it to the side. And the more money you get, won't you cannot buy your way out of your shadows. They're still going to be there with you. So, yeah. I get it. It's like, it's a saying that as you were speaking, it was a, it's like a saying came to my head and it's, grind without inten intention leads to destruction mm. and it's like when we are consistently grinding with no intent on where we're going it's just we're for lack of better words we are destroying ourselves and you're right it's like you have to understand it's like you have all that you need already but the act is what you said earlier does having for lack of better I actually have money right here in front of me. Does having this in my hands just change how I feel? Mm -hmm. Or was that feeling always inside of me? Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's something that would help a lot, you know, people watching this or just in general. It's like where where is your happiness? Where is your happiness? Where is your treasure? You mm -hmm. know, if is your treasure in your money? Or is your treasure, you know, where money can't be? And mm -hmm. I think that's what's been one of the biggest things that's been helping. And it kind of leads into a question I wanted to ask you. You've been reading um, the book The Go-Giver by Bob Berg, which is a fantastic book. 
And um, I read it about two years ago, but I remember the mentor and mentee relationship between Joe and Pindar. And I wanted to ask you, do you think that sort of dynamic of mentor and men- mentee and mentor is essential for one's personal life journey? I wouldn't say it's essential, but I would say that it can be incredibly helpful, you know, as someone who is self-taught in a lot of different things. So like editing, for instance, I was self-taught for a while. And so I got to do some dope stuff with Adobe. Like we understand that we can learn things by just messing around. But when we have a YouTube video that explains something and saves us 20 hours of our life, we're like, yes, thank you. (laughs) And then, so I feel like we know how it's just that it's like, it's just a fast track towards getting to our goals when we have somebody who can help us out, um, especially when it's a genuine relationship and it's not just a um, like a YouTube video, for instance, where you just go and you like some of it's applicable, some of it maybe isn't. It's so different when you have someone who's like who's mm-hmm. there with you and In they really time. are holding space for you and they really get it and they are tailoring their support and guidance to exactly where you are on your journey. It's, it's such a game changer. Um, so yeah, I feel like I've been, I've, I feel like I've never really had like a mentor per se, like one person who I feel like has been with me the whole time, but I feel like I've been really blessed to be in different communities and different groups and have people within those groups. Like Adobe is one for instance, and I wouldn't have been in like creator camp if it hadn't been for Halise. So her leadership, both just her being who she is and then her very literally like inviting me into the program has been incredibly expansive for my creativity. So I do feel like it's, and that just speaks like that people being the greatest resource, you know, and that being one of the major ways I believe God blesses us is through other people. Um, So yeah, I, I, actually I'll I'll send it out to God that I would love just a particular mentor who's like, Hey, Chimdi, let me teach you some things. That would be awesome. And I know asking me shall receive. So I expect in one to two business days <laughs> to get an email from someone who's like, Hey girl, I got some feedback for you. Um, but yeah, definitely it can, it can really just fast track things in a major way. Definitely. I'm going to keep you posted if that happens. <laughs> um, but definitely, I, I definitely um, appreciate your answer on that. And it actually just leads me to ask, do you see yourself, let's say future chimney down the line, You've obtained what you envisioned and everything that God has for you. Do you see yourself being in the same place as Pindar and taking on mentees to help them unlock the greatness in themselves? Well, one phrase I've heard that really resonates with me is the idea that if your vision only includes you, then it's not big enough. So I feel like my very purpose is one of being in community and being one of like conversation and like I've I think the way I'm wired, especially around how I like to have conversations is very specific and it speaks to my purpose because I really do love to hold space and to just like ask questions and to dig and to like encourage and support. And so it's, I think it's inherently a relationship based purpose that I have. Um, So I think throughout my whole life and it's happening now and I believe it will continue to happen. There will always be that element of mentorship. Um, and I would be on, it's truly an honor to be able to provide guidance to someone else and to, for God to use you to bless other people is how I would see that. So I would be, it would be an honor to be able to like support other people in their journey and to save them from some of the pitfalls that I've experienced and give them that encouragement and support when they're down to be like, no, you're, you're going to be okay. You're, you're okay now. And you're going to keep being okay and holding the vision of their truth. Like, I think that sometimes we forget our greatness and that's when we get into trouble is we start making choices from that mindset that we're not the best. And then I think what's beautiful is when we can see others the way God sees us and we mm. hold steady. We don't let that vision waver, even if they're feeling a little wobbly in it. So, yeah, well, that would be a truly an honor and a blessing to support people because um, we know how powerful it is when people support us. So, yeah. That's great. That's great. Well, I want to thank you for your time. This has been a really good interview. Do you have any bit of last words, words of wisdom that you have for people? And for anything, make sure you go down in the link below, uh, you know, support the channel. Like her links are down below. Support anything that she has coming up. Do you have anything coming up that you'd like to share or any words of wisdom? Um. So, yeah, I mean, of course, like you said, links below. So always sharing the nuggets um, that I have on YouTube and whatnot. I think 
one thing that was on my spirit to share when we were talking about the money thing and like holding the dollar in your hand was this idea of like, what story are you telling yourself that when you have paper in your hand, the story becomes something else? I think that's very interesting and can be very helpful um, because nothing's changed, but there being paper literally between your fingers. So now what's the story that's different? And I think knowing that story can help with a lot of healing. Um, and the other thing I would say would be like, to give yourself grace and, to com and compassion as you're going on your journey. Um, because the things that helped us get through our childhood and earlier points of our life, when we were in challenges and we were coping, that is what allowed us to survive and to get to where we are now. So do not beat yourself up if you're finding yourself engaging in patterns or behaviors that you feel don't serve you anymore because they helped you get to this point and now you are aware enough that you can do something about it and shift differently. But do not beat yourself up, it doesn't, no one wins when you are unkind to yourself. Like you're great, you know? So that would be the main thing. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Thank you so much for your words of wisdom. Thank you everyone for watching. We're gonna go ahead and wrap this up as always. You all know it by now. If you like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And most of all, most of all, this is where y'all say it now. Most of all, you make sure you share this with a friend. This is Avadon and Chim D, and we are out. Take care, y'all.